And welcome to another Cardinal's Nest here on HBC TV 25. This is where we talk St. Mary's University athletics. I'm Dean Beckman, along with my co-host, Donnie Netto. Donnie is the Sports Information Director for St. Mary's. And as we do every week here on the Cardinal's Nest, uh, we put a spotlight on one specific sport. And this week, it is men's soccer. A little bit later on, we'll bring in sophomore midfielder Mateo Means and uh, interview him and let you get to know Mateo a little bit. But first, we have the head coach. We have Corbin Bowers with us. And Corbin, you're in your second year now as head coach for the Cardinals. And uh, does it feel to have that feel good to have that first year under your belt and, and now in year two all that experience is uh, is ready to burst out right I think so it's, <laughs> year one was was interesting it was good but I think year two comes with different pressures new pressures so while I'm happy to get year one out of the way it, now it's new challenges and I'm excited for year two talk about um, what you what the biggest thing you learned from last year in terms of being a first year head coach and now heading into that second season, what do you take from last year and say, okay, I don't want to do that again? Or, or is there something that you did and said, okay, let's just build on that? Talk a little bit about just the, the adjustment from year one to year two. Sure, I think a lot of the stuff I learned was about man management and learning that every player needs something different and a different way to relate to them and finding a special way to connect with each and every single one of our players. And I think something new and different that I've done this year is to make sure I'm assertive with our guys and letting them know where they are with their role in the team and explaining that and helping them transition to what their role in the team needs to be and being very upfront with them has been something new I want to do this year. I think it makes sense though too that that is a transition for you, right? Because you were an assistant coach for the Cardinals before becoming the head coach. And clearly there are different relationships between assistant and men's coach. So I think for you, probably just understanding that and then easing into the transition probably made it easier for the players, if you can talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah, I think for us, we talk about process-guided results, and we know that we're not going to earn or get there on the first day. And I talked to my guys early in the season about it. It's 71 days of practice, and it's going to take us 71 days to get to where we want to be. And 18 games and every single one counts or it builds up into the next one. And I think that's something we really want our guys to realize that it is a process. And we may not even get there this year. It'll take a while for the kids that came in last year, my first recruiting class, and the kids that are here for the second recruiting class. We're going to have to continue to build on mm -hmm. it, and it. And we're not going to get where we want to be in the first day. I think Donnie just had an Allen Iverson moment when you said <laughs> 71 days of practice. Right? <laughs> I did, I but, did. But that's a lot, but, but we see him out there all the time. Don't Absolutely, we? and talk a little bit about, about preparation for games because, uh, you know, I mean, 71 days sounds like a lot of practice, but talk a little bit about how you approach a week. Let's say, uh, use this week for example, you have a Wednesday game, you have a Saturday game. How do you approach the week in terms of training and preparation for Wednesday and then regrouping in preparation for Saturday? Yeah, I think our Monday, our first day of the week practice is our strongest one where we can really, we're far away enough from a game where we can train really hard and improve on stuff on the weekend and get our match fitness back to where it needs to be and train at a high intensity. Tuesday, we've scouted our opponent that we're going to play on Wednesday and our practice is based on our opponent. Can we find their weaknesses, exploit them, what do we need to work on, what will be our strengths against an opponent. Thursday, most of the time, our group recovers, and then we have a catch-up session for the guys that didn't play heavy minutes. And Friday, you're prepping again for the next game and playing again. So it's nice to have one intense practice a week, but everything ends up being preparation for matches. You know, when you talk about that preparation, one of the things that I find really interesting is that uh, you really prep for the conditions of the field that you're going to play on. If you're playing at home or a place like St. John's that has turf, you practice on your turf field. If you're playing on a grass field, you'll practice on our practice grass field. Talk a little bit about the the purpose for that. What's what is the biggest difference in terms of and don't make any comments. The <laughs> difference between playing on turf and playing on grass. Yeah, I think for us it's a surface thing. It's a speed of play issue. Uh, our possession-based style of soccer, we really want the surface to be fast and quick. And playing on turf is very different than on grass. The game will slow down. Or even if you go to Saint Olaf, which they have a brand new turf field, the game was a little slower because the turf was brand new. So just our guys being able to adjust the speed of play and realizing that the grass is going to slow the game down and we may have to overhit a ball, that's really important for our guys. We want to keep the same style, but they need to adjust to the surface. So I was looking over your roster, big roster, but uh, not many seniors, right? You have, what, three seniors three. on this year's roster? So maybe talk about that and uh, the role that those three seniors play. But for you, does that pose any challenges, having a more youthful team than, than what maybe some other teams you're facing have? 
I think our three seniors have been, been through it all, and they've seen the program where it's been at its best, at its worst, and it was a huge class when they came in, and they're the only three that are remaining, and I think it speaks miles of what they've put in, the time they've put into the program, and two of them are now captains with Alberto and, and Chris, now taking up leadership roles. I think both of them were kind of in the background. Chris has been an impact player from the beginning, but maybe not a voice of leadership, and now he's able to do that. In terms of the youth of the team, it's, it's interesting. Our team has come together really quickly and really well. I think it's probably the best team chemistry I've been around in my three seasons here. And even though we're young, I, the, the guys are learning. They're getting better every day. We're going to make young mistakes. Any player knows that. And I talk to my freshmen that you're going to make mistakes. The speed of play is ridiculously different than high school. And they're learning. And the best way they can learn is from those mistakes and getting games under their belt. Talk a little bit, you mentioned Alberto of being uh, one of the captains as, as a goalkeeper. Kind of was one of those players that had to bite his time. Uh, Nate Levy graduated after last year. He played the majority of the minutes. Uh, talk a little bit about Alberto and how he's kind of come into his own this year as, as your number one keeper. Sure. I think the biggest strength of Alberto is he's the hardest working guy on our team. He spends a lot of extra time improving on skills, fitness, summer work, everything. He's always training, always wanting to get better. And that's been his best leadership qualities. Everybody can see him working and they understand the standard of work that needs to be. And now he's stepping up to a position where the goal is his and he's got two keepers behind him that are pushing him to be competitive. And I think it's a little reward to the hard work he's put in for the past three years. You know, I notice one of the things that I've noticed, and I know you and I have talked a little bit about it, it your personality is, is pretty quiet, pretty laid back. And it seems like that your players on the field kind of take that same approach. I've seen teams in the past that are constantly yelling at officials, constantly yelling at each other, but this team seems to, whether they're succeeding or having some adversity, they seem to be able to just kind of continue to battle and continue to work without it becoming disruptive in terms of uh, you know letting their emotions get the best of them. Sure, I think that was one of my biggest critiques of our group last year is that we let adversity or officials or any of that get in our way as an excuse, as a crutch. And we talked even yesterday about taking responsibility for our results. And even Saturday wasn't the result we wanted, but we're now all taking responsibility for it. And the transition, something new we're doing this year is talking more about grit, which is a kind of a cliche term out there with Angela Duckworth and her book on grit. And we want to be a gritty team and we're working towards long-term results every day. And so that's why I think you see somebody that's more calm, cool, and collect than getting all over each other. So Corbin, you're off to a three and three start this year. And uh, so maybe tell us how the year has gone so far. And I know coming up in the next couple of weeks, a nice mix of both conference and non-conference games. So give us your take on the year up to this point. Sure, I, th I think the opposition we've had has been a good mix. We've had some teams that we could use as preparation games, but we've also been challenged with playing the number four team in the nation early. Uh, playing Central was a very good team and now the American Rivers Conference as well. So I, I want our guys to be challenged. As we head into conference, they need to have strong matches. And even though we lost the last two games, I really think we've played really well and we're, we're due to, to get a result on top of a performance. We talked to our guys about if they can put in a performance, the result's going to take care of itself, and I think that's going to come pretty soon. You know, you, I was going to say, you mentioned that game against St. Thomas, number four in the country, and uh, that was a game you lost just two to nothing, and uh, there were a few bounces in that one yeah. that uh, if they'd have gone our way, yeah. if you hit the crossbar, a great save by their goalie, but you know, uh, it's a whole different uh, match if, if those goals go our way and those bounces go St. Mary's way. Um, is a nice home crowd for that particular game. So I think there's uh, some enthusiasm and energy on campus uh, based on uh, the product that you're putting out on the field, right? Yeah, I think it's an ex we're trying to play an exciting brand of soccer. And I think when people come and watch us, they want to come back. Uh, we got lucky enough in preseason that there was a cookout during one of our scrimmages and people were able to watch us and we got guys to go out there and invite them to come back. So if, if we can mm -hmm. continue to play that exciting brand, the crowd's gonna come. If they can see we held our own with one of the top teams in the country, I believe that they're gonna be there for right. more games. Yeah. You know, as Dean had mentioned, uh, Mateo is coming on uh, uh, after the break. Talk a little bit about Mateo and, and what he brings to this team because, uh, you know, I call you the silent atta assassin. I mean, he is, he is probably the hardest working individual I've ever seen and, and, and certainly is, is one of the most talented players that, uh, that you have on your team. Yeah, I, Mattel's done great in everything we've asked him to do. It's probably the recruit I've spent the most time on trying to get here and, and it's been well worth it. And he brings a lot to the table. 
Uh, size has not been an issue. I mean, he plays well beyond his size, and, and we talked throughout his whole recruiting process that, that that wouldn't make a difference to me, that he was a talented player. He pushes guys in his position. One of my favorite moments so far is he came out of the game against St. Olaf, and he took a quick sip of water, and then he was out cheering guys that were up there in his spot playing, even though we were down 4-1. So he brings a lot to the table on the field, but he's pushing guys, and even as a sophomore, I see him as somebody that's leading our team in the right way. Well, I hope you didn't have to recruit too hard to get him on the show today, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least not as much time as it took to get him to come to St. Mary's anyway. And uh, Mateo, of course, is from Dallas, so it, it took a little time to uh, convince him to come up north, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's probably my favorite <laughs> recruiting story. Um, Mateo, being from Texas, had never seen snow in his life, and when he came for his visit, it was in the middle of a blizzard, and he came on the shuttle and he got off and we were in the middle of a snowstorm and he's still here so I think, uh, he found the right fit. <laughs> right, not bad. Um, oh, another question, What when we interview Mateo, he'll tell us about himself, uh, but he'll be humble of course. What will Mateo not tell us that you think we should know and our viewers should know? Uh, could be a fun story, could be uh, just something about his play. I don't know, I th he'll, he'll definitely be humble and I think the best thing we can hear about Mateo, and he may not want to bring it up, is what he does for Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be the greatest thing. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely ask him some questions about uh, his involvement there with Special Olympics. So, I was going to ask before we went to, to head to break. Uh, six games in, has there anybody? Has there been any players that have uh, maybe surprised you a little bit, or maybe uh, playing above maybe where you expected them to be at this at this stage? What's been great is that we have mostly sophomores and freshmen playing and that the freshmen that have stepped up into starting roles have all done well and are adjusted. Um, I think Henry Kelly in the past few days has, has stepped up into a spot where he's, he's earned a spot. RJ Vasquez as well. So there's a lot of guys stepping into new roles. Uh, Eli Shemaski has probably been our most impactful player so far, stat-wise, number-wise. And being a local kid from lacrosse, for him to step in and, and play in this league is great. How about, how about the play of Robbie Sobsek? I mean, we've joked off camera that we have head counts on him because uh, it mm -hmm. seems like anytime there's a free ball in the air, he is there, whether it be in front of their net, in front of our net, or in midfield. I mean, he's always, he's always where the ball is. I, I think he's hungry to put, to put the team on his back, and he's going to be all over the place. He, by pure sheer power, will score it on Saturday, just running up from the back to score a goal. And... He's hungry to take our team in the right direction, and he shows it every day in practice and in the game, and now he's in a, in a different position than he's been in the past, and he's doing just fine with it. So he wants it just as everybody else, and he's willing to throw everybody on his back and get there. All right, Corbin, thanks for coming on the show today. Good luck the rest of thanks the year for having here. Me. All right, stay tuned to the Cardinals' nest here on HBC. When we come back, we'll talk to Mateo Means, the sophomore midfielder for the men's soccer team. We'll do that next on HBC. Elevate your HBC TV experience with the latest technology to hit your whole home entertainment system. Record up to six programs simultaneously and save up to 350 hours of your favorite shows. Pause a program you're watching in one room and pick right up where you left off in another. Video on demand, wireless set-top boxes and mobile device streaming, apps including Alexa, Netflix, YouTube, and more. Call 888-474-9995 to learn more or visit hbci.com forward slash elevate today. And we're back here on the Cardinals' nest on HBC. Men's soccer is our focus this week, and we have the sophomore midfielder for the Cardinals' men's soccer team, Mateo Means, joining us. So, Mateo, welcome to the program. Welcome to the Cardinals' nest. Your first time on. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, you bet. So, Mateo, uh, you are from the Dallas, Texas area, and you heard uh, your coach, Corbin Bowers, kind of talk about your recruitment process. Now we'd like to hear about that recruitment process from your side of things. So tell us about we're getting recruited to St. Mary's and why even in the middle of a snowstorm you decided to uh, move up north uh, to Minnesota, Winona specifically, to attend St. Mary's. Yeah, for sure. So um, since the beginning, just wanted to play soccer and a um, big thing for me was just playing time and, you know, um, short stature for me and I wanted coach to be confident in my play and not look at my size at all and just judge me from that. So. Coach Powers from the beginning um, wanted me up here and, you know, he said that size doesn't matter to him and came from our visits, connected with all the guys a lot, had a great time and connected with the coach and whole other atmosphere as well. I definitely went to a smaller school just to get that more attention with teachers and that connection with the whole entire environment and student body as well. So worked out for me at the end and very happy to be here. Was it a big adjustment coming, 
you know, we, we get students from all over at St. Mary's, but from Dallas, that's a long way from home. Was it a big adjustment being that far away from home, especially last year as a freshman? Um, at the beginning it was, definitely during the winter, just the climate change, everything like that, and weather as well. Not used to snow at all, so that was interesting, <laughs> the first snowstorm. But besides that, not really, just because I'm close to all the guys here, make it felt like home. Whole entire student body as well, you know, everybody's there for each other, um, athletes, non-athletes, and teachers as well. Just they create that connection with you, they make you feel like home, and they're always there to support you as well. You know, you had brought up uh, the height issue, uh, your coach did mm -hmm. as well. Is that something your whole life that you've been trying to fight against that stereotype that you have to be, you know, 5'8 to 6'2 in order to play a sport of some kind, specifically soccer in this um, case? I think definitely. If I, I've been cut from some teams just because size. Um, Talent-wise, I thought I was up there with a couple guys. And at the end of the day, they just looked at the size and they said, you know, if you can be at this level just because of that. But mm -hmm. it definitely was a um, requirement for some teams. But I think I've overturned that most of the time. And, you know, at, um, adversity right there. But... Mm -hmm. At the very end of the day, you know, I know what I can do, and right. my teammates know what I can do as well. What advantage does it give you? Because I would imagine, maybe from a speed standpoint, uh, agility standpoint, you might have some advantages there. Uh, my mom actually told me, first five minutes of the game is yours, just because they're going to judge you from the beginning and be like, you're mm -hmm. not going to go up for a header, you're not going to go up against a tall guy. And, you know, I'm going against tall guys, you know, if it's six foot guys in midfield, just going up against them. And, you know, after 10 minutes, they're like, we can't go easy on this. Game, <laughs> right. So. Yeah. He can play. Right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, a really quick one to touch on uh, your academics a little bit. Right. So you're interested in going into something sport management or public relations related. Maybe talk about your academic and career aspirations a For little sure. bit. Um, so just being a sports guy, I'd love to get involved in sports management, or some type of sports deal. I had an internship this summer with Visit Dallas, worked with Sports Commission's team, which was awesome. And just got to feel that environment and what that workforce is like. And definitely just aiming towards any of public relations type deal or sports management, but definitely want a minor business because you use business for anything nowadays. And, and I get a feeling like maybe a dream job would be communications manager for, oh, I don't know, say the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> perhaps. I know he's a big Cowboys fan. For sure. That'd be awesome. <laughs> You know, before we talk about, about this team and, and, and this season, talk a little bit about your summer because you had a summer that was a little different than most people in that uh, you got to play you got to play soccer um, with the Special Olympics. Talk a little bit about that, uh, how that all came about, and then uh, your experience uh, doing that in Chicago. Yeah, so um, this summer I got to take part in the Unified Cup with Special Olympics teams. 24 countries represented it, which is amazing, amazing environment. Um, I've been working with SETC Dallas Special Olympics team since in the senior year, so about two years now. Mm -hmm. And they invited me to be one of the partners on the team. So the partners with people with non-disabilities compared to the athletes, which are people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So they asked me, we had five partners in total and just an amazing experience. Um, you know, at the beginning, I was looking for this experience for the kids as well with disabilities, but I got so much out of it as well, just meeting kids and that they are adversity throughout life as well and then coming together competing having a great time getting to live that professional atmosphere playing the chicago fires pitch their training facility um, getting treated like celebrities around the chicago area which was awesome mm -hmm. but for sure it was just once in a lifetime experience i'll never forget it i'm going to learn from it as well and hopefully keep up with it also you know you talked yeah. in the beginning of that uh, you know about you've been involved in this since uh, senior year what is it about the special olympics that kind of in, you, piqued your interest and, and really has kept you uh, involved in that uh, now as you've gone into college? Um, going into sophomore, um, senior year, so I, every Wednesday at my high school, we had a day dedicated community service. And my community service was working with kids with disabilities and they clipped for me from the very beginning. And I have friends that have younger brothers with disabilities and I think it's just great to give back. And you know, they made such an impact on my life and other people's lives as well. They don't know that, but they really do. And, just to get back to them and help them and, you know, connect with them and break down those barriers was awesome. So just from the beginning of knowing people with disabilities and how much they impact in my life, I want to try to impact their life as well. So, Mateo, talk about now uh, the season. We'll transition into how the season has gone. We mentioned earlier you're off to a 3-3 three and three start. Give us uh, the players' perspective of how the season has started out here. For sure. Um, lots up and down so far, but, you know, whole entire way, team's been very positive, which is a big trait for us this year, is keeping that positive mentality throughout the whole entire season. If it's a rough conference loss, like we did against St. Thomas or St. Olaf, you know, played very well both games. Hunt in there, but um, coach talked about playing until the very end, and just keeping that positive attitude after that. 
We played three non-conference games to start off with, played very well against them, um, told, you know, just get everybody in, involved in the games. Freshmen stepped up all the way to people who, not as much playing time, they always stepped up. But definitely these conference games have been very difficult, but, you know, we realized we're playing the MIAC, every point is valuable, every team is very even with each other. So just getting, you know, playing the number four team in the nation was a big wake-up call for us. And we hunted in with them, we watched the film after, and, you know, we kept up to their abilities. And there's nothing to be ashamed of with the 2 loss. loss. We look forward to taking um, the positives from that game and putting them into the next conference games. Talk a little bit about the adjustment for you from freshman year to, uh, to sophomore year. What has been the biggest thing that you've taken from last year, biggest learning experience that you've taken into this year? Um, for me, I think it's the leadership role. Um, we had great senior captains last year. They pushed us to the very beginning, just for freshmen to step up as well and lead the team and their group and everything like that. So leadership-wise, you know, we got a young midfield. Um, so just trying to step up as a leader for them, always keeping positive attitudes. They always work, every person on our team works very hard. And everybody's a leader as we look at it on the team. And I'm just trying to step up as a leader role and help us encourage that and tell everybody else that they can be leaders as well on the team. Uh, Coach Bowers talked about uh, how this year's team uh, communicates maybe a little bit more, a little bit better. What have you seen from that standpoint and how is this team the, the team's chemistry coming together here. I mean, team chemistry since day one was amazing. You know, atmosphere is everybody adrenaline to an end, first practice, fitness test, everything like that. And, you know, everybody's having a good time out there. And everybody's picking starter up. One of, one of my favorite moments of preseason was the fitness test. And people that were out of fitness test early on, we had Robbie and um, Eli, a freshman, compete to the very end. And I think they reached level 23, which is insane. But, you know, <laughs> just the team atmosphere and we're picking each other up being like come on you can do it and keep pushing everything like that and I don't think most teams would do that you know competitive nature like that but we're always there for each other have each other's back and then on the field this season if we have a bad play we pick each other up um, when subs get subbed in you know keeping that same energy we're telling them that they can do it and then the bench as well has been very um, energetic as well so that's been very helpful for the players on the field. We had asked uh, Coach Bowers to give us a story about you. Now, now let's turn the tables a little bit. Let's flip that. What can you tell us about Coach Bowers that maybe we wouldn't know just from talking with him? Um, you know, he we played indoor last season. Um, every Tuesday, Thursday, we had indoor practices with the whole entire team in the mornings, and he played with us as long as our oldest as a coach, Chris Gaskin, and. Corbin may seem nice on the field, but when he gets playing, he is very, very physical. You know, he's calling fouls on us, and somehow his team won the tournament, but I think, I think my team won, but, you know. Yeah, good. Gotta get it to him, so. so how about, how about now uh, from a coaching standpoint? What are some of his attributes that you think have really helped bring this team along? For sure. So um, I've had lots of coaches with a mixture of yelling the whole entire game, being on, your, being on you the whole entire game from the bench, and yelling at you, but I've also had coaches that are laid back more, let you play your game, and then at the very, at halftime or at the end of the game, adjust to you. And Corbin's one of those people that definitely is laid back, and he doesn't want to get in your face. He doesn't want to give you that negative attitude. He's always positive when he does. Um, he tells you if you did something right, tells you you did something wrong, but he wants to take a positive even if you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And he pushes us from day one. Um, the whole entire coaching staff as well is just very positive in their nature. They always have a great game plan. We watch film, they are, they're always ready for the next day and they're mm -hmm. always ready for the opponent. They do their homework um, and they just really, you know, they connect with us as well, off the field, on the field. Off the field, they're gonna joke with us, stop by their office and you don't just have to talk about soccer. You can talk about academics, talk about what's going on in your life and that's a very big positive, not just for me, but for the whole entire team as well to get that environment of we trust our coach and he's there for us, just non-soccer purposes. Sure. Well. You know, we were talking off camera uh, before, the, before we started taping uh, your biggest fan is still in Dallas. She does yes. make it up every once in a while and, and, and brings her, her camera along. Talk a little bit about the impact that your mother's had on your life and, and uh, you know, how nice it is to have somebody that can roam the sidelines and really an outstanding photographer, takes some phenomenal pictures of you. And, and Donnie wants you know, to hire like? her. I do. That. I already do. Every time she comes up. But talk a little bit about, about her role in your life and, and uh, you know, what it's like to, to have her come and visit you when you get to play here. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, just my whole entire family. Um, big family guy, you know, they impacted my life since the very beginning and they're always supportive. You know, when my college decision, my high school decision, they're always there for me with the best for me, but to have them come up, my whole entire family, a couple of them are coming up as well. 
it's just awesome. You know, they watch all the games live stream, look at stats when the live stream is not available, but they're always supportive to me, and you know, I got to be supportive of them, and they're always dedicated to what's best in my life. And like you said, my mom on the photography, she you know, she's she's awesome at it. You know, um, since the very beginning, she would be on the field. You know, she talks sometimes, she's taking photos, she'll yell at me a couple of times. You know, <laughs> but you know, it's all fun and jokes, and. She, both, both my parents just impacted my life in such a positive way. So. Yeah, and, and I know your parents are interested in your academics because I've met them too, right? <laughs> yes. At one of those academic socials that we've had. So, so that was good. Last question, Mateo, then we'll let you go. And that is, uh, I'd be curious to know uh, a Texas native's impression of the MIAC. Uh, did you know anything about it coming up here? And now that you've had a you know, year or so under your belt playing in the conference, what do you think? Um, you know, not familiar with the league when I first came in for my recruiting visits. Um, all the guys on the team at the time told me it's one of the most competitive leagues, not just for Division Three, but all of NCAA sports. And, you know, when, you, when they tell you that, you're like, yeah, you know, haven't played a game yet, we'll see what happens. First game, you know, you get hit. <laughs> first, first minute, right. and then, you know, this is a very competitive league. And, you know, all across the boards, if it's basketball, um, if it's hockey, if it's soccer, anywhere, it's just very competitive. And it's, it's a great league as well because all the teams are even, so you don't know who's going to win each. Every game is given, you know. You don't know if we're going to win one game or they're going to win another game. And those games, just the atmosphere on the field as well. Everybody's given 110% in this league, and it's just a great league to play in. And mm -hmm. definitely, um, it got my going into the league and not knowing anything, first game, really got me <laughs> Got up. your attention, yeah. yeah got good. my attention a lot. So. Yeah, good. All right, Mateo Means, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Good luck the rest thanks of the year here. Appreciate yeah, you it. bet. All right, stay tuned. Donnie and I will be right back to wrap things up on the Cardinals Nest here on HBC. Be sure to check out U.S. Golf TV, where you are going to see golf products that you have never seen before. You're also going to see golf tips from some of the leading instructors around the country that are truly changing the way people are teaching the game and challenging the status quo. Also, you're going to see fitness tips that are revolutionizing the way PGA Tour pros are training their body and swinging the golf club. If you want something different, if you're looking for some new information, U.S. Golf TV has it. Be sure to check your local listings. U.S. Golf TV, we've got you covered. And we're back here to wrap things up on the Cardinals' nest. Dean Beckman, Donnie Netto, and uh, all of the sports are really kind of in mid-season form, literally, it's right now. Believe, it is mid-season for all of the fall sports, so it's a really busy time of year, Donnie, and maybe none busier than this upcoming weekend where we've got everybody in action. Right? Yeah, they talk about uh, a sports information director's nightmare, and that's this week. <laughs> that's on uh, week. Wednesday, we've got a triple header with uh, two soccer games. The uh, women play River Falls and the men play Loris. And at the same time, the volleyball team is playing Augsburg, so we've got three events, home events going on at the same time. Same thing on Saturday, we've got a doubleheader soccer with uh, both teams playing Augsburg, and then the women will play, uh, uh, volleyball will play uh, St. Kate's. So we've got uh, two triple headers this week. Men's golf has got their quote unquote home invitational. It's actually at the Jewel in Lake City, but uh, we are the host school, so that'll be uh, nice. The women had their home invitational last weekend. It was uh, good to see them play at the Bridges and in, in hosting a tournament. So uh, everybody, like you said, has been in midseason form. Kind of hard to believe that uh, you know we're already to that stage in the in the schedule. But uh, you know every day just keeps rolling together, and we just keep plugging along. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see cross country get back in action because I know their first home uh, meet, the Alumni Open, was sort of rained out there, so they couldn't do anything there. So they're finally yeah. back in action. But they had a hot weekend, their first real Ab competition. Absolutely, weekend. and it was one of those that you were kind of concerned that uh, maybe they wouldn't get that one in either. With right. you know, with temperatures in the upper 80s and the humidity in the in the 70s, it was uh, it was certainly not. Uh, the kind of running conditions that they would like. Isaiah Olsen led the way for the for the men, and Danielle Frankie led the way for the women. Uh, good performances, probably not the times they were hoping for, but uh, you know, talking to the coaches, really that had more to do with the temperatures, the temperatures and the yeah. and the conditions than it did with the fitness level. Uh, they're off now for they won't run this week, but they'll run next week and uh, and kind of get back into things. But hopefully, the weather will kind of cool down a little bit and mm -hmm. and get back to more fall like temperatures rather than that right. uh, July temperatures in, in uh, September. So a busy week ahead for St. Mary's athletics. We would clone you, Donnie, but your wife. Dee Dee assured me that would not be a good idea. That would not be a good idea. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this Cardinals Nest. Thanks for watching here on HBC TV 25.